jewelry designer based in Los Angeles. I started my jewelry line, I think two years into moving to Los Angeles from Texas. And it started out as just sketching jewelry that I wish I owned that I had never seen anywhere else and I just couldn't find. I never thought um, those sketches would turn into something tangible, honestly. It was just me being creative for fun or something. I remember having pieces that I made in my apartment for a, almost a year and I just didn't know what to do with it. I felt like I wasn't emotionally in a place to release anything. So everything just kind of sat there. And I remember a month before I turned 30, I told myself, you're releasing these pieces and no matter what happens, you can be proud of yourself. I had always wanted to be a writer. Like being a writer was like what I wanted to do and what I was convinced I was meant to do. And then when I moved to Los Angeles, on my downtime, I did find myself like, all my downtime was spent writing. Like it was never anything like, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna do jewelry, like I'm gonna make jewelry. The only thing with jewelry is I've always loved jewelry. If you look at photos of me when I was a kid, I always had on jewelry. And when I look at it now, I think it's funny. Like, oh my God, I'm wearing a necklace or I'm wearing a bracelet. And I think my earliest memory with my grandma was we used, she used to get these orange peelings with the needle and thread and we would make necklaces from the peelings of oranges and I remember it being like such a fun thing but it was it was almost like it wasn't a possibility to be a jewelry designer. I didn't know any like Kurdish let alone Middle Eastern or South Asian like jewelry designers at all like I don't I didn't see anything in magazines, I didn't see anything on TV or film or like anything like that. So it's kind of like it was just, it wasn't an option because I didn't know it was an option. I've just always been into fashion and jewelry and it's like been something that I'm just like naturally like makes me happy. And so I guess that's where kind of the sketches started. I was just like, you know what? It'd be cool to like sketch some jewelry and see what could happen. I'll be honest, like without Instagram, I probably wouldn't get very many sales. I feel like a lot of like my clients or customers, they all come kind of through the Instagram platform. And so I'm grateful for that in, in that way. But I also know, I just have a, I just feel like Instagram is kind of on its way out a little bit. And it's creatives kind of finding uh, ways to drive you know, people that are interested in what they're doing to their websites. It's almost like I don't even think to go to websites as much as I used to, because Instagram has made it so easy. You can even like link out through them and just stay on the app. I think Instagram's, unfortunately, it's really important. But also fortunately, I guess, because like, Instagram's another way, Instagram and Twitter, like so much news is spread in a way that we would never have seen it before because you look at like TV news outlets or something and they don't they're not talking about anything that we're talking about Instagram is kind of a platform where like people like me or you or like anyone can kind of like spread a message or spread awareness on something that's like super important and needs to be heard like everything going on in Sudan for example I feel like without Instagram and Twitter and people speaking out and raising awareness on that I don't think anyone would even know what was going on, honestly, and that's that's sad, but it's also like I'm glad and grateful that we have a space like this to where you can stay updated on what's going on and not solely rely on three channels. I've always kind of seen what I'm doing as just like a hobby that a lot of people could get into. And it wasn't maybe until this year that I started taking it a little bit more seriously and realizing this could be a career and it could grow if I wanted it to grow. But it was never kind of a hobby before. I've just always really, really been into jewelry. Jewelry's always kind of been a part of my outer identity. I literally tell people, if you see me with no jewelry on at all, it means I'm having a really, really bad day. Those days that I don't have one thing on, it's like, dang, she must be going through something, honestly. But I just, I love jewelry. Like, I guess jewelry has always been like a hobby in that I love collecting it, I love seeing it. I love traditional jewelry. I love going back to Kurdistan and going to like the bazaar and like seeing like the cheap stuff in the markets, but also like the gold shops is so inspiring to me. As I've gone older, as a Kurdish woman, and I feel like a lot of like other women in the region maybe could like identify
identify with this, but gold is always yours. Kurdish culture, for example, when the woman gets married, the, the groom side family kind of has to give a dowry of gold to her and that gold is always hers. I remember not understanding that when I was like a little younger or understanding like why my mom loved gold. I, I love looking at it, but I was like, mom, like it's not worth like spending that money like on gold. Like why would you do that? But as an adult who has kind of understands the meaning of it for women back there, I think it's like a really cool thing that like the gold is always hers. My first job was I worked retail. I think I was like 17. It was at Wet Seal. The reason why I wanted a job, honestly, I'm the oldest of five and my parents are pretty traditional. They were more strict back then. And so it was never kind of an option to hang out with friends or have like a life outside of school or home. And so for me, a job was freedom and it was all mine, you know? Like I had to be somewhere and it gave me a sense of responsibility and it created also like a work ethic, I think. Getting a job early on is important in order to build like a type of work ethic. No matter what the job is, I feel like you should always kind of bring everything you can to it. When you get a job early on, it creates that kind of work ethic. Honestly, my audience is what drives me. I do think I have like a little bit of a niche audience. I want everything I do to feel inclusive to all people, but I also don't necessarily mind that like it's curated all towards women of color because I feel like there's never been brands like that. I feel like there's just so many brands uh, to represent a white audience and you know, that's great, but like there's like hardly or there, there were like no brands to represent women of color when I was growing up at all. And so when I started this brand, it's not something that I went in thinking, oh, this is how it's gonna be. But naturally sometimes, like when I'm doing shoots and like uh, for certain pieces, I like to like work with women who um, their culture represents what I'm doing. Like if I did something like Egyptian, like I like to work with like an African woman, you know, who like feels empowered by wearing an Ankh or a Nefertiti piece. But yeah, I do think I have like a niche audience. I'm grateful for it. Some days when I'm just over everything, I think about some of the messages I get from women of color and they're just like, this is the brand that I wish I had growing up or this is the brand that I've been waiting for. I really just started it for myself because that's what I wanted to. And it's really cool to see like it resonate with other women who feel the same way about my pieces. I feel like anyone that's wanting to do jewelry or like make jewelry, it's totally attainable if you have a vision or you have something that you want to see created. I never studied jewelry. I never, I didn't go to school for it. I've taken random classes here and there, which are depending, I feel like no matter where you live, there's a class or two somewhere, whether it's like at a bead store, or even like a fabric store might do it, that offer some type of class. But there's something about putting yourself out there in a situation in the jewelry making world and for, like doing something like that enlightens you or opens up something new or inspires you in a different way when you kind of put yourself in a thing, in a situation where it's like, well, I don't know if that's gonna benefit me, but maybe like, something else will come of it. I feel like that's kind of how it's been for me. Just putting myself in a situation that I'm like, mm, do I really want to do this? And then I do it and I'm like, dang, I met some really cool people or, oh man, I'm inspired in a way that I didn't even realize I could get inspired. When you see something that you actually made, it really does inspire you to kind of keep pushing and making more. And it's okay if you start out just making it for yourself, you know, like you never know where it might lead or what it might lead to. I'm a big believer in like whatever is meant to happen is gonna happen one way or another. Sometimes like it's like on an unconventional path I feel and you had expected or wanted something completely different for yourself forever and then something else happens and you're like dang like I never would have thought I would be doing this but I'm so grateful for it and I feel like like with me like my jewelry I feel like it's really like helped me grow as a person as a woman of color uh, when our parents have so many expectations on us and my parents are constantly like, you're always gonna be our little girl no matter what, this and that. And I'm just like, see me as an adult, like I'm trying here. And so the thing that I found the most comfort in this 
like through this all that kind of distracts me from like anxiety or whatever is literally making jewelry and so I feel like part like a lot of some of the reason why it entered my life a few years ago was to kind of be this thing for me to go to. So this is my latest piece. It's inspired by like a thousand percent the Kurdish women fighters. It says Jin Jian Azadi and so Jin means women, Jian means life and Azadi means freedom and it's um, a motto. Honestly, I feel for like all women and the, this motto specifically for Kurdish women. There's like a strength in Kurdish women that really inspires me. They have a resilience. They're fighters, they're mothers, they're providers, they're caretakers, they're daughters and sisters and like seeing these women fighting on the front lines, you know, for like the safety and protection of their land and their families and their people. It's so inspiring because it's like a level of strength, I think, that um, I don't know if I have. And it's, they're doing that, but they're also like taking care of like children and their parents and making meals and smiling the whole time. That's what this piece is inspired by. I think of them a lot when um, certain things that I feel like I shouldn't be worried about this, like it's not that serious, you know? And just thinking of their strength and their resilience, and it's like one of the most inspiring things for me. I guess it always has been, I just haven't been able to formulate it into thoughts, you know? Just seeing it through my mom, or my grandmother, or my aunts, and just now through women I don't personally know, but that I feel like I can, I don't know, they're me, you know? Thank you.